Hi, Austin. Thank you for being here today. Um, I just wanted to ask you, just how have you been feeling lately? Um, you know, I I feel like I've I've been better in the past. Uh, it's been just a little bit of like a a rough go for the last little bit. It's just been kind of hard balancing like all of the things that I have going on. So I don't know. Just I get down kind of often I guess but yeah when you say you get down you guess a little bit can you dive deeper into that what do you mean by you're kind of getting down like I don't know it's just there I get so I don't know like stressed I guess um that like it, it just gets like super overwhelming with I'm like oh I gotta do this stuff for work and I got to do this stuff for school and then I have lots of other responsibilities like in my family and like with my my wife and you know it's just so like the, all of like the responsibilities that I have and the tasks that I have to do are just like overwhelming and I feel like I don't have enough time and that a lot of people are I guess like counting on me to do all these things and I just don't know if I can handle it all. And like, it'd be almost easier if there was like, if they all just disappeared, you know, all these responsibilities just like disappeared, you know. That sounds like you have a lot on your plate and you're juggling a lot of heavy emotions. Um, with you saying that you feel like it would be easier if things just kind of disappeared. I want to ask you a few questions about that. Um, have you ever had feelings about being dead or wishing that you just never woke up? Um, yeah, I, I guess I'd say that's where, like, my mind goes when I think about, like, not having these responsibilities anymore. It's just that, like, yeah, if I just, like, woke up, went to bed and didn't wake up, then all of my responsibilities would technically be gone at that point. So, yeah, I guess I do kind of think about it a little bit. Have you had any thoughts about killing yourself? Um. Yeah, yeah, like not maybe in like the most traditional sense, but yeah, maybe a little bit. All right, Austin, thank you so much for opening up to us. And, you know, I know that talking about this can be hard, so I appreciate you letting us know. Um, so with that, I just have a couple more questions if you're okay with that. Uh, have you thought about how you would, how you would kill yourself and how you would make yourself not alive anymore? Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I mean, kind of, kind of, I guess kind of like I said, I, maybe not in like the traditional sense. I know a lot of people are like, like, I think for me, it's more like, you know, it would be like, like I wouldn't. You know, I don't have like a gun or anything or any prescription medication that I would use. But I, I think most more often than not, I think about like. I wish that like. It could happen and look like an accident or natural, you know, like if it was like a like a car accident or something, um, right. well, either like my own doing or like if it just like happened to happen, you know. So I guess maybe that's kind of what I think about is like, what if it was a car accident that was bad enough to, you know. Okay, so are you saying that you wouldn't really initiate it yourself, but more like if it happened, great? Yeah, probably. Okay. okay. Um, when you thought about making yourself not alive anymore. Did you think that this was something you might actually do? Um, there have been like a couple times where, yeah. Okay. Maybe just on like a commute to work or something on the freeway, I think about it. Right. 
Okay, well, that concludes our questions. Thank you so much for talking to us and opening up about this. Yeah. And now, um, discussion. Discussion. Um, so from your guys' point of view, as like the clinicians, um, what did you observe in like the nonverbals, voice, tone, pitch, body language during the assessment? I feel like the first thing that I took note of was just a lot of like turning away when like speaking and just a lot of pausing and kind of like when you were saying yes, you'd be like shaking your head no or stuff like that. And I feel like it more almost just sounded like life was just super busy and it sounded like there just needed to be a balance and just like kind of like a a plan, like a plan of action to where you could set aside time to just debrief yourself and just relax yourself and not just constantly feeling like you have to live up to everybody's expectations and balance everything perfectly all at once. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. Sorry, go, go ahead. No, you go for it. I lost my train of thought. Um, well, yeah, that, that I, I think that's kind of what I tried to convey as I was um, playing that part was the, just a general evasiveness and a lack of of eye contact and you know things like that because in my head I guess I was thinking that this was like maybe the first time I had actually verbalized these these thoughts to um other people um yeah I feel like what I observed is maybe you were almost unsure of how you really feel yeah. if that makes sense I don't know like you haven't like been able to identify all of your emotions or your feelings Right. Yeah. yeah. And it was something that like I was maybe just starting to entertain the idea a little more seriously. Mm -hmm. So um, I wouldn't even go as far to say that it was suicide ideation. I don't think I don't even think it had gotten to that point yet. I think it just sounded like heavy load, just looking for a way to just have a just a moment to just breathe. Mm -hmm. And just have a moment to just yourself and just to relax and not have to feel like you're having to stress and handle so many aspects of life at once. Right. Yeah. And that's kind of what I was going for. Um, as far as the clinical implications of the client assessment slash the next step to ensure safety of the client. Um, what are we kind of thinking? I think I would maybe start with creating an action plan, like I'd kind of said, um, kind of create an action plan of just a weekly schedule of the things that you have to do and find a time where you can just set aside all of the struggles and just take a moment to yourself and find something that helps you relax. And then I think also maybe just because the thoughts and like ideas of suicide were brought up, I would maybe want to add in another meeting, like if it's like if we were meeting like two times a week, I'd maybe want to add an extra meeting in between those just to make sure that the thoughts hadn't gotten more intense or that there was more of a specific plan like that had been put in place. Yeah, I would definitely say maybe like checking up with, you know, a therapist like once a week just to like go over your action plan. Like, how are you doing? Like, you know, going through those emotions um, to kind of help those suicidal thoughts go away. Yeah, I definitely think clinical intervention is definitely necessary. Anybody who's dealing with these kinds of thoughts and emotions, they they need to be followed up on and they need to um need they need that constant kind of supervision and checking in to make sure it doesn't get any worse than it is. And um, and then hopefully create, you know, some kind of you know, give them coping mechanisms and resources that can help them so that when they do get to that point, um, it doesn't go past that point. And then eventually over time that that like they don't even get to that point. So. Right. Um, and it's any... apparent. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, but I feel like it's apparent for, you know, the clients or individuals dealing with this that they can't. 
they can't get through it on their own. Like they need that extra help and, you know, motivation, I guess, to get in a better place. Mm -hmm. Um, Do we think there needs to be any plan for safety or further hospital evaluation or anything like that? I would say no, not at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Just continue to meet with the, the clinicians. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Nice.